My name is Alec Britz and today we're going to be checking out the Echofix EF-X2 unit. This unit provides you with tape delay, spring reverb, digital reverb and chorus functionality. Big thanks as always to Studio Care for supplying the review units. If you enjoy what you watch here, please consider subscribing. But for now, let's jump right in. On the front of the EF-X2, it all starts with our mode button. The mode button has 1 through 7. Now modes 1 through 3 are your short setting, your medium setting and your long setting. Mode 4 is short and medium combined. Mode 5 is medium and long combined. Mode 6 is short and long combined. And mode 7 is short, medium and long combined. So all of these things work together to be able to get you to really creative combinations of different delays. Underneath that, we have our four switches. We have the direct on off switch. We have the motor on and off switch. Then we have the sound on sound on and off switch. Then we have the echo on and off switch, which obviously bypasses the echo record circuit. We have the guitar high Z input. We have the line volume. We have the reverb decay, reverb volume, the speed, the echo volume, the feedback. We then have the bass and treble parts. This is the tone control for the entire unit, so it's both the echo and the reverb together. Then we have our inputs. We have the guitar high Z input. Then we have a line input. Then we have the CV control speed input over here. So if you have a volume pedal that has a TRS output, then by using control voltage, you can operate how fast the delays are occurring. So obviously this means while you're playing, you can also change the pitch of the delays by speeding up or slowing them down in a nice creative manner. Next up, we have our CV remote feedback, as before, to be able to control how much the unit is feeding back by using control voltage. Next up, we have our remote effect cancel. This allows you to be able to use a foot switch to be able to control either the reverb or the delay, or if you have a foot pedal that has two different switches on it and does TRS in and out, then you can cancel your echo with the tip of the TRS pin or your reverb with the ring of the TRS pin. After that, we have our output, which obviously connects into your interface or amplifier. Then we have our output level. So this allows you to be able to drive the unit harder. So if you want to overload the input, then you crank that guitar line in or the line in itself, and then you can back off the output. And that way you get a really nice blend of drive from the unit or you can have it as clean as possible. This will also help with noise floor. So if you can get your gain staging right in the unit, your noise floor is not as much of an issue because of the different tape heads and the tape itself. And then finally, we have the chunkiest power switch in all of the land. On the rear of the device, it's pretty damn simple. You have two XLRs, one male, one female for input and output. And then you have a nice locking mechanism for your remote power supply. The first thing we want to take a listen to is the drum bus, and I've put it on the snare channel over here. As you can see on the settings, everything's pretty moderate, but let's take a listen to the drums dry and then bring in the EF-X2 for a bit of ambiance. All right, let's bring it in. Listen to that snare by itself. So I'm busy using the delay of the unit to be able to create a bit more of a swing. So the delays are... And that just makes the whole groove just kind of group a bit better. Bound by blood I remember when we were kids Sitting on the back stoop floor Bored and anonymous Sunday So now let's try it on the vocal because, well, that's one of the things I love most about this box. I've got it with the digital reverb set up and a bit of a slap delay on the go. But let's take a listen to this line dry and then we'll take a listen to it with the effects on it. Look at you now, you're the family man with the most beautiful heart. Look at you now, you're the family man with the most beautiful heart. You know, you're the family man with the most beautiful heart. I'm busy driving the unit as well. Who would I be if I didn't have you right there from the start? It's just such a character when you when you see that little dial glowing red and it gives you that little bit of extra grit. 
It's so powerful. Let's move on to some electric guitars because that's quite a lot of fun. Now, when I recorded these, if you've checked out my Manly Force video, you would have seen this EFX2 already in action. But for now, we're just gonna add a little bit more ambience with a really long feedback. So let's take a listen to the original without any delay on it. <laughs> Now let's bring this guy in. And now let's play around with the speed to make different pitches happen. It's super cool. It's so cool, in fact, that I think what I'm going to do is take the outputs of this bus and then record them, and then I'll double track it and have the two different pitches moving around left and right. <laughs> that is so cool. All right, and then let's bring it in with the chorus rhythm guitar. Alrighty, so let's take a listen to this vocal in solo, and then we will bring in our tape delays and reverbs on the sides. Bound by blood, I remember when we were kids, sitting on the back stoop floor, bored and anonymous. Bound by blood, I remember when we were kids, sitting on the back stoop floor, bored and anonymous. Just take a listen to how well this vocal sits in the mix now. Bound by blood, I remember when we were kids, sitting on the back stoop floor, bored and anonymous. And without? Bound by blood, I remember when we were kids, sitting on the back stoop floor, bored and anonymous. One of the things I enjoy doing is transposing one of the reverbs. In fact, I'll just show you how I do that real quick. So we now have these two guys that are low. So if I duplicate these two channels, do that real quick, bring this up here. So what I'll do is I'll take Alter Boy and pop it on both of these. We'll just take the pitch up by 12, drop the format on one side just a bit. And let's see what kind of mess we've created here. So that sounds absolutely awful by itself, but let's see what it does when we bring it in with the vocal. Bound by blood, I remember when we were kids, sitting on the back stoop floor, bored and anonymous. Sunday nights were the hardest to all. I had to do my homework, but you could sit and watch friends. It's just a really creative way to be able to express, isn't it? This unit's been in the studio now for about five weeks, and it has managed to worm its way onto a whole bunch of productions, some of my own that you've already seen, like on the Manly Force video, on the Rupert Neve Design Shelford Channel video. The weird thing about it is that I haven't really reached for a lot of guitar pedals while it's been here. You see, because you can switch between spring reverb or digital reverb, you have the choice to be able to kind of craft exactly what kind of ambience you want to have. Then you have your tape echo as well as a chorus effect, and being able to tailor between those four things things all together allows you to be able to craft a really interesting and unique guitar tone. And unique is kind of the biggest thing that I love about this device. You see, because everything's in real time, and because you're using your hands to do everything, you're not as calculating, you're going more on like knee-jerk reactions or on feel. So that means that a device like this might drive your productions into a slightly more creative area because it is naturally imperfect, it is a bit noisy, it is a bit clunky, it weighs an absolute ton. All of these things pulled in together allow you to be able to craft something that is truly unique and reactive. Reactive to the gain that's coming in, reactive to the performance. So let's talk about the price of this unit as well as the build quality. 
Anytime I review something like the MBC that I did a little while ago, I always reach out to the manufacturer and say, are there any challenges or any cool stories about how you guys came up with this stuff? And um, the Echo Fix guys reached out to me and said, well, the thing that was hardest to get right were the magnets inside. In fact, it took them two years to get it right. So when I saw the price of the box, I thought to myself, whoa, that's a lot of money for something where there are so many plugins. But as I said before, they kind of make the plugins irrelevant. There are going to be some creatives, some producers, some songwriters where spending this amount of money on an Echo is just out of the question. There's a lot bigger problems, a lot bigger fish to fry, if you will. But for me in a studio like this, where a lot of the basics are already taken in place and now I'm on the hunt for unrepeatability, then devices like this rarely come to the forefront. I have two different plugins that emulate what this thing does and neither of them hold a candle to the creativity that having it here in person unlocks. I never quite understood why some mix engineers or some producers would always have Vincent's or have some kind of interesting echo that even if they were mixing in the box, this was the one thing that they kept using. Now that I've actually played with this for some time, I can totally understand it. And if I had the money, it definitely would be staying in here. I love the fact that it has a warranty. I like the fact that everything about this thing is replaceable because it's being manufactured today. It's not a recreation using old things from a long time ago. All of it is serviceable. Thank you guys so very much for watching. If you've enjoyed what you've watched here today, then please consider subscribing. To those of you who have subscribed, thank you so very much for doing so. Most importantly, I hope that you're all looking after yourselves and you're being kind. I'll see you in the next one.